and welcome to another live demonstration. I'm always looking for things that I'd like to show you, interesting um, techniques. So today I'm going to show you coloured pencils on a translucent paper. So, you know, you have to look at why you would do it, pros and cons. Um, I was looking at different types of translucent paper and you do have to be a little careful, some aren't archival, so if you are worried about um, it in the future, getting brittle or yellowing, just um, which watch which one you choose. Plus they have slightly different surfaces. I tried a tracing paper. Um, in the end, I ended up with the polydraw drafting film. Now drafting film is a really smooth surface which architects, illustrators use to be able to build up layers. Um, it's, it says here, will not tear, will not yellow with age, so that's great. This, this was really nice because you also get these uh, leaves which protect the sheets of the polydraw so you can draw on and then use these to protect. As with anything, I did lots of tests to see what mediums worked. Um, graphite goes on really nicely and actually I was really interested in how smooth you could blend the graphite. Goes on well, easy to layer and actually very easy to lift out. You can see here how it goes right back. Doesn't matter how hard, it will still take it back. So that's a really useful thing to know. Then looking at waterproof pen, it goes on really nicely. Wasn't able to scratch it off. So, you know, useful for pen work. Polycolour, now this is coloured pencil, which when you put on a cartridge paper, you need a medium to move it and blend the pigment and it doesn't erase very easily. Now, one thing I did find was that it did erase really easily from the drafting film. Now you'll see underneath it's blue. That's because I use the back. That's another tip which I will be using in my demonstration. I'm using the back of the paper to give a different effect. But what I wanted to show you was how well it lifts off. Then trying different things like, I've used a Stabilo pen, which is a water soluble pen. See how well it moves. Graphic, again, water soluble once wet. And again, see how it moves. It leaves nice um, lines, this, what they called, hard lines, those hard lines instead of soft lines. Um, so again, if I was using graphic, I would try and practice and test. Posca pens, which go on pretty much everything, so I wasn't overly surprised. There is white under here. Let me get a dark piece of paper because I don't think you can see it. So I was trying to see how a white pen works on it. It does work, but obviously you need a different colour underneath. Then I was trying to scratch into it to see whether I could scratch in. It wasn't overly effective, but this was a test. I haven't yet used it and seen its full potential. Then I've used acrylic inks. Again, they've stuck. It took longer to dry than I thought, but all these things can be used and I will play with them in time. But the one I've chosen to use is the polycolour. So that's a coloured pencil on the translucent paper. Okay, I'll be using that um, coloured paper later to show you something else. Okay, so what I've done is I've drawn um, the B down and I noticed when graphite, it takes it really readily. So you have to be very light. And I was using a very fine um, pencil because it takes it so readily and just grips it. Yes, I can erase it off or dab it off. But if I'm putting colour on, I don't always want to see the lines underneath. Now, you'll see here I have marks, and this is because I've been allowed to move my paper. It was a lot of negotiation, but I had to explain that I need to be able to move my paper this time. So this is the drawing, and this is how it's going to look like. But I'm just going to flip it because, and I have to put it back on the marks. I think that's it. Is that okay, Gary? It's close enough. Close enough. Okay. Um, so I flipped it. So you've got a reverse image. 
because I'm going to draw on the back. And I'll flip it over and you'll see why I chose to draw on the back. So I'm going to start with the background. Um, just going to put a little colour. And yes, I can, I can see where areas are in the background, but I'm going to kind of make it up. It, I'm using it, as I, always, I often say, as a guide. I'm not using it completely um, step by step. Now, you can do if you have more time. I don't always have the time to be able to do that. I kind of have to keep it to about 40 minutes. So this is what I do. I use it as a guide. Putting colours on, these represent the light and the leaves in the background, so they're blurred. Let's just get it to work around. So again, no real um, thought about it as such. I'm just looking for the colours. Now I've got a big set of 72, which is great. It's fabulous, but it's a bit of a problem because I have to keep moving the trays around. I should have chosen the colours, but I'm not always sure what colours I'm going to use. It kind of changes as I do it. So this is representing those light areas where you can see the sky. Okay, I'm going to go on to green now. Let me see. Can't remember what colours I used in the past, so I'll just see which colours work. I'm just going to fill up the background space with, this is quite a nice green, moss green. And then I can go in darker. But what I want to show you is I can actually go over some of the colours that I've put down and they still show through. I'm actually working quite gently. So here, I don't know if you can see that, I've actually put some of the light blue down. And as I'm going over it, it's still showing through. I'm, just, I'm doing a very small um, drawing for a reason. It takes a while for you to build up with the colour pencil. And I will keep working and I keep manipulating drawing. So normally I'm quite loose when I work. But I do find with coloured pencil you can be loose, but you also find yourself being very drawn in to drawing in a very much more controlled way. And down here there's some green coming through. Well, there is now. And I think it's this side. It's because I've flipped, I've just got to remember which side I'm looking at. And it's actually, I think it's down here, there's a green showing through. So maybe if you were doing this, it would be a good idea to have a flipped image um, to see what you're working from because it's not always that easy to get your mind to flip itself. Like I say, I'm using it as a guide, so I'm not overly concerned with um, where I've placed the colour at the moment. I'm trying to get this on quite quickly. So using the edge, and you can see there, again, where I've put colour on, just going over it because it's still showing through. So I'm getting the colour on quite quickly. Like I say, normally it would probably take a little bit more time just to think about colour placement. But if you want to watch me for the next five hours colouring in the same area, I'll have to move on. So just getting the colour on quite quickly want to darken it, so I'm looking for a darker green. I think that one would be darker. Um, looking at where darker areas are, so around the bee. What I really like, this is my own image, and I'm quite pleased with it, is the detail you can see in the actual bee, all the little hairs and the direction of the hair. So usually you don't see a bee very close up because they're flying around. I must have got lucky with this picture. And again, I've been able to crop it to get even closer and really concentrate on the bee. Um, 
let's just add some dark areas but not overly color so you can see why and how you could keep going and keep um, working into this pushing a little harder just to get a little bit more color down really go back in strengthen this side just to give different tones so it's not so flat a colour I don't think I've got a darker green I'll have again go in with even darker so what I'm showing you is how you can layer, how you can build up detail and tone just on this very smooth paper, very smooth. And it's, it's kind of silky, it has a silky feel. Okay, just see if I can add a little detail at the top here. I'm thinking about where it looks like I need darker areas. Is this enough? Does it need a little bit more? I'm, like I say, I can probably keep going back into it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to continue to just this is working on the back, remember? And I'll show you why when I turn it over. I'm just adding a little bit of color but not too much. I'm being quite good putting them back actually. That's only because they will run away and I'll be end up having to pick them off the floor. Because I want some soft areas, this is why. And I'm just putting colour down. I've not really thought about um, where I'm putting the colour. Now, when I flipped it over, I noticed there were some quite strong um, lines of the pencil. Now, I, what I wanted to know how I can soften this, so I tried different things, and I ended up with this is called the Magic Eraser, and it's used in watercolour, and it lifts off really nicely. What I did find is that if I very, very gently, because if I <laughs> rub too hard, you can take it off, which is great because you can take things back um, really easily with an eraser, with something like this sponge. But what I did find, if I very softly move it around, I can take some of those pencil marks and soften the black ground a little bit more. But I did have to be careful not to take it off. So it's taken some colour off, but what it's done is soften that background, just make it even more blurry. So I think that's done for the background so now I have to be very careful and flip it back so working on the background and you can see there it's kind of made the colors a little bit more muted a little bit I'm having difficulty getting it back it keeps sticking down Gary no, that's, that's close enough. it's close enough okay so I don't know if you could see the difference, but from working on the back, it's so much softer, it's much blurrier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some colour onto the flowers. Then I think we'll take a short break and then I'll work with putting detail on. So the flower colours, I'm going to have them in my hand. So just choosing colours which match as much as possible and for the moment I'm just going to put colour down because I know I can layer not overly concerned what I have done is I've thought about the shape of the flowers I can see because I don't want to concentrate on over flower I can if I had time and I wanted to I would concentrate and really think about the shapes and bring out much more detail. I haven't got the time and sometimes 
I don't think you always need to. I think a good representation works. I like a sketchy effect that, you know, you've got the time. You can do it in your own time. So all I'm doing is just putting down this lovely colour. It's called Heather, actually, which is nice. And it's a good close match to what I'm looking for. So you can see, not overly thinking it. Some areas a little harsher than others. And I don't know if you can see the difference, but I put some of the colour in the background and that's much softer. And now I can actually add this colour a little bit stronger. So that's one. And you'll notice I keep my pencils quite blunt because when I'm putting colour on, I like them a little blunt, just so it puts the colour on quite quickly. They're easy to sharpen using um, a traditional pencil sharpener, to be honest. But when I'm putting colour on, just in like this, I do tend to keep my pencils quite blunt. And I know a lot of you will like a really nice sharp pencil. I know I can sharpen it, it's a later date, but for me at the moment, it works well as it is. So just picking up a little bit more of the purple colour. Anita? Yes. Should we do some hello? Hellos, we'll yes. Some hellos. hellos. Hellos this time, just okay. hello. So we've got uh, Pariniti Gupta. Pariniti Gupta. Who's watching in uh, India. India, uh, oh wow, yes. Uh, Salma, who's watching in Spain, one of our regulars. Salma in Spain. Uh, Amber hasn't said where she's from. But she's, uh, Amber uh, from uh, somewhere. Amber, she loves watching uh, <laughs> all your live streams. Well, thank you. Thank you for everyone for watching. And we've got Karen in Namibia again. Karen in Namibia. So, what time is it in India? Because don't don't, we don't know. Out. Yes. So, Thank you for all watching, because I know you're all watching at very different times, because you seem to be all over the world. Sorry, I just got a little distracted trying to think about where I was putting my colour. So, like I say, I like to bring you interesting things I've seen, so I'm always on the hunt and looking for new techniques. Well, not new techniques, techniques other artists are using, how they're using them, and then... I have to learn them to be able to bring them to you. Um, so I'm always learning a new technique, which is quite daunting, but it's a lot of fun at the same time. So I do understand frustrations of people who are maybe starting out or using a new medium, which they haven't used before, because I'm doing it every week. Um, and it's not easy, and sometimes you go, I can't do it, I don't know what I'm doing. But it just takes practice. And I know I say it often, and I mention practicing, but it really does. Practicing and not being overly concerned about doing a finished piece every time, all the time. Anita? Yes. I've got some times for you. Oh, good. Yeah, I like to know. So, uh, in India, yeah, uh, India is one of the countries that actually are a half hour ahead of us as well. So they're five and a half hours ahead of us. So ahead. Just, so that's okay. That's the daylight. Yeah. Uh, Namibia, it's uh, nearly two o'clock. Morning. Uh, <laughs> that's good. So we've got no crazy times. Yet. No crazy times. So that's good. I, I just, we've had crazy times before, and I just really impressed that people have the stamina to be watching. Oh, and another hello to uh, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. She's in uh, sunny Shropshire. Shropshire, yay! Mm. I think last, last week we didn't have many UK no. representatives. We were a bit more global. She, so loves, oh, she loves the idea of using uh, the drafting tool. It is. It's a lot of fun. And there's more tips to come. I just don't want to get them all out there in one go. I'm saving them up. So you can see how really easy to be honest I've built that up now I can concentrate on adding this is tell me if they're in the way Gary is my left hand in the way, a little bit in the way. A left hand in the way um, 
because I tend to hold everything and I will have a pile of colours in my hand. If I keep putting them back, they, they, I lose them. So, right, this is actually quite a strong colour. It wasn't the colour I expected it to be, but to be honest, I'm going to go with it. I quite like it. It's given me a bit of fresh pinkness. What I know I can do is I can take it back. I can soften, I can erase it, but I'm not going to. Sometimes these little, you know, when you pick up the wrong colour or, or you add it to, um, are quite useful because it just gives you a, a different perspective and think, well, that's not what I would have chosen. So a lot of the time I find I have to stop thinking about what I'm doing. Not easy when I'm trying to tell you what I'm doing as I'm moving around, but I'm not overly thinking things which I do see a lot of people do. Once you're happy with what you're doing, then you can start to overthink. But I think in different stages, when you're drawing, when you're practicing, when you're learning, don't get overwhelmed with overthinking things. I know that's easier said because you're all trying to achieve um, something that you, you're trying to achieve straight away. but. Trust me, you should see the number of... I'm going to put those down because I'm going to get shouted at. Um, you were this close this, to being shouted <laughs> This close to being shouted So I'm going to finish putting a little bit more tone on here. Then we'll have a short break and then I'll work on the B. And then I can see whether I'd, I still need a little bit more tonal value on here. But I don't know if you can see, but I think those flowers are really starting to come together. And I've not overly thought about them. I've not really worried about shape it's all going to it's all been color and tonal value just, just thinking about darker areas i think i'm going to leave it there because i i feel i need to stop i need to look review and then come back to it so join me in a few mo moments um after the short break i will have had time to look to look at the reference picture to see where i need to go in put more detail on um, and then we'll start on the B. So join me in a moment. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus, a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started, as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking, just join. I love it. And we're back. So hello and welcome back. In that short time, I've had a chance to look at the reference pictures, decide on what I want to do next. I'm going to leave the flowers for now. I will come back to them at a later date and I'm going to keep that pencil out so I remember what colours I've used because I want to start on the B and by starting on the B it just gives me um, a reference to know how much detail I need to put back into the flower because my focal point is the B so I'm just going to put colour on and I'm using um, the wonderful golden colours I can see so a bit of brown, a bit of um, ochre because Again, I know I can layer, but I want to just bring out the colours. 
with it being so close up, I can really see fabulous colours in this bee. I'm just really pleased with how it's turned out, how the photograph turned out. You should be. Yes, <laughs> bee. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. I'm, I, that's actually your first bee joke. Um, you, I would have thought there would have been more. Been more. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to go from there. Let's see if we can be funnier. Be funnier, yeah. It's started something now. I don't think he's going to stop. Every time you will think of something. Okay. I'll, I'll behave. You'll now. behave now. Thank you, Gary. I think that's enough. No, it won't be, will it? You'll continue and find some more. Okay, so you'll see here I'm using the brown. Again, very lightly because I know I can layer. And over the some areas which are much more fluffier I suppose this bit here the thorax or is that the body it might be th this, this bit of the body here um, has a lot more hair than the back and again I want to try and keep some light Anita yes I have a question yes uh, from Karen she wants to know do you start dark and work light or vice versa when you're laying the pencil I guess it's, it's when you, when you flip the other way, you might work one way, and when you flip back, you work the other way. I should say I know exactly what I'm doing, but the truth is I'm not always sure. I tend to put the light on first and then darken, because I'm going to darken this area, but I'm going to darken at the end. I think by doing the dark at the end, you don't overdo it. You know, you can judge as it comes together how much dark or shade you need. If I'd gone dark first, I might have had to adjust it and lighten it. So actually, I'm going to do the dark. Think about it. I do the dark last, pretty much, that, those last final t touches. Apart from here, I'm going to put some final touches with white because I find that the white pencil in here wasn't opaque enough. But on the whole, I think I will do the darks at the end. And I, thinking back of how I work, it's usually the way I will um, work that way just because you can have those final touches. Um, and it, often I work with watercolour anyway, and the light's already there first. So right, let's continue with this. I'm going to go back in with a darker brown, which is probably one I've sharpened, because I want to just start and bring out a little bit of the shape of the... Um, I don't know if bees have fur, but they have hair. It's hair, isn't it, really? So I'm looking for different textures. A nice, soft texture in the background. The flowers, I'm going to crisp up a little bit more. And then the hair on the bee, I'm going to show with directional marks. So it's, very, it's much darker under here. A nice big eye. Mouth is actually quite prominent here. So I'm looking at some sharp areas and I'm layering and a great way to keep your pencil sharp. These are the pro, pro color pencils and actually what I do like about these is they have good colors. Some of these purples are not overly light fast but you'll find that in any range to be honest. But what I like is the very hardcore, so I'm able to really push into the paper um, and it doesn't lose its point. Another tip for keeping a point is also to turn your pencil as you're working with it. And you can see here I'm starting to build up. I think the body is quite solid here, so it's going to be darker. And the hair comes out over the back here. Anita? Yes. I've been Googling. You've been Googling. Um, a bee's covering is known as its pile. Its pile? pile. Wow. And See? It's often referred to as branched hairs, but not fur. No, I, I didn't think a bee would have fur, so hair, but pile. See? Learning something all the time. So I will. Try and remember to call it its pile. But it, like I say, you don't always get that close to a bee to see um, how its body is made. 
And I actually like to investigate and to look and to see um, the makeup of the thing I'm drawing because it just helps you put things together. So it's, I can see here on the back, it's, it's a little bit softer. So I'm trying to show that softness by changing how I use the pencil. Okay, so like I say, I like to learn the anatomy of whatever I'm drawing. Not break it down fully, but it helps because I know that the legs, you've got two sets of legs here that come from the middle of the body, the bigger one being at the back. I know I can see it on here, but it also means, you know, when you have to pull something out of the bag, you do a little drawing. I can do a B um, because I know its dimensions. I know how long its feet are, where its feet are positioned, like this. And you've got one here coming over the face. It's actually got some little antennae here, which I think are great. Okay, so that was brown. I'm going to use a black when I remember where I put it. There you go, black. Just to very gently soften off. You notice I haven't done the wings yet because I'm leaving those to last. I'm just going to extend his eye a little bit because it's much bigger than I've drawn it. Always looking, always adapting, always changing a little bit. But I think that's worked. Going to now put a little bit of colour in, some golden colour actually, into the wings. So the wings, they're held on here, but they have some golden colour, but really going to be very gentle about how I put this on. I don't want to lose that translucency which you've got from the paper but also from the wings. Um, go in with a bit of blue. I know you can't see blue um, on the picture but I think it will work and this wing here is very white where because it's translucent, you will get the colour of the body behind it. So I need to just soften and bring that back without losing some of the colour. Not bright enough for me at the moment, so I'm going to go brighter, pick up a little bit more. So maybe you can't completely see these colours in the wings but it does help just bring them forward so this is where as an artist you are add a little bit of light onto here so i could leave it at that but i think it still needs a little bit more i still can see this is where i'm going to use that tonal value that darkening which i didn't know if i needed or how much i could um, do but here just by darkening off and working on the flowers maybe under here and softening see that's quite flat go back into that not overly thinking I'm not pushing it around too much but it does need a little bit more tonal value darken here and it's all these little touches which really start to push forward and take it up another level. So I talk about overworking and overworking, it's a, it's a difficult um, thing. Overworking is when it, you could have stopped and it actually was looking finished, it had the right values. This is reworking continuing to work um, but it is a very difficult thing because but some mediums are much more easier to keep reworking keep 
rejudging, keep re um, looking at your toes and keep going back in because you can take them back. Whereas some things like a watercolour, you do need to um, be careful because once it's on, you can move it a little bit, but it doesn't have a lot of chances. A little bit dark, a bit of red, maybe add a colour where I think it could work. Like I said, I can't always see fully what you can see. So for me, that's looking good. But what it's not got is not got that last final bit of white. So I find that the white pencil in the set wasn't opaque enough. It wasn't giving me enough to bring out the white highlights. So I'm using a gel pen. I know the paper will take it. I've tried it. And what it's going to do is it's going to pick up some of the white highlights just along the back, just catching some of the hairs. You do have to be careful not to overdo it. Just catch because there's lights touching the back and again along the wing. If I can just really make that very white dot and catch some of the tips. I think it just takes it to another level. This needs darkening. It's too light near the body. I'm not, it's not really attached. But you can see how easy it is just to alter it, move it. So like I say, this gel pen actually works really nicely on top of the coloured pencils. Being a little bit temperamental. And now I should have a piece of paper to try. Actually, I do have a piece of paper to try it on. There you go. Because it's the um, wax in the pencil is just resisting it a little bit, but it does give it enough to catch her. Can you see the. Oh, yeah, yeah it's that's good. There. It works. Like I say, I'm not, I can't always see it because of the light. Makes a good, makes a good big difference. A good big difference, does it? I, I, I can't see it to me. I can't see it too much, which is why I will overwork. Yeah, don't overwork. So I'm going to stop there. Yes, there's lots of areas I can still keep working on. But I want to show you another reason for using the translucent paper. Tough, great fun. But now I've finished it. You know, I want to frame it. So how do I frame it? You see, I've used the white paper underneath because that helps me give the colours. But another great fun thing you can do when you're thinking of framing is you can put colours behind. So look, I've put black. That's maybe dulled it a little bit too much. Let me see what red does. It's a lot of fun. So not only is the translucent paper great to work on, nice for layering, you also have the fun of how can I finish it? Don't think, look, there's a real difference. It, it dulls it. The red sucks the colour out a little bit. Okay, so white we've tried. What will blue do? Again, that's made it cooler. It's a lot cooler. I did notice the blue and the grey tended to cool colours. Um, and, and dull it a little bit. White's obviously the brightest, but it's just where you can have a little bit of fun with your colours. Mm, I think this is Moonstone. I just got a variety of colours I had, so I haven't got an over amount. But you can think of a yellow or an orange. It, there's some. It's nice to try colours because suddenly a colour will suddenly go. Actually, I would never have tried that but this is really works. So a little bit more fun you can have with the translucent paper or use it on that nice white background. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, using coloured pencils on a 
drafting film. This is actually draft drafting film because it's got those archival, really lovely, smooth properties. Um, so join me next week for another live demonstration.